Hello, my name is Roland Jung from ePlan Canada. I want to show you something. In ePlan, of course, when we create a new project, we always start with a template. This template is picking for you the number format of your devices, number format for your wiring, the numbering format for your cabling, and it also what it does, it imports a bunch of forms forms for reports reports that may actually tell you you know what kind of pages you have and technically you only have to work on the uh, interactive pages now some pages like the title page or the table of content are actually automatically updated so you don't really have to worry about those inside your schematic pages, you will be drawing some schematics, either using your favorite macros like this, X, Y, enter. And as you can see here, I can right away number all my devices. In this particular case here, I'm numbering my devices by page and row number. And I'm also attaching to each of these devices, like here is a safety fuse. We can see it's a safety fuse. It has a part number and that part number that I picked comes from a long list of parts that we all picked from the data portal. Data portal, which is quite useful because you can go and get parts from a huge number of manufacturers. You can actually type on Google ePlan uh, data portal and you'll see. Now, the other thing that I'm using it for too is the eBuild. Quite interesting as a tool because if I do open here the eBuild, oops, I think it's opening here, we can look in the this configurator and we have a few different configurators that have been created over the time and the one i'm particularly interested right now to show you is this one here so we will be adding to this project here some uh motors okay now the par parameter that starts is here the starting page and then we ask how many motors do you want to do now for the example i'm just going to do one control and I'm going to show you a little bit how these controls work because inside these controls, you can now specify the page description. So let's say that in our case, we want to generate, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. It's going to be easier for you to actually see the transfer, uh, transfer belt number one, which will be a, let's say a three pole control, a uh, three pole motor. The size of the motor will be a two horsepower. It's going to be for the transfer belt motor. And here is how we can control it. We actually offer a few different ways. Let's say we go with an instantaneous trip circuit breaker. We do have a PLC control. We will use terminals and we will look at the calculation. Look at this. You just hit the generate button and automatically this will generate a page, which you can now draw up inside your panel. This is what I'm doing here because I use the IEC convention for plus location designation, which reassigns pretty much all the parts inside this page to this new section, which is in section A1. We can see that the cross references, they work immediately, like from page to page. This is really cool. What it also did is it actually created this complete set of schematics. Plus, it also created for me the whole um, calculation here on the right hand side. So if I'm looking at these calculations here, it's actually telling me that I need a 14 gauge, which was, was assigned, and a 25 amp uh, protection for this guy up here. Okay, so technically, uh, this information all got transferred here. You can see 2.7, 25 amp. I just have to now go and check out what kind of 25 amp I have uh, in here, 25, 25. This is one, I'm gonna use this one, okay? And just assign it. In bingo, you have this part number assigned, really cool. And I can do this, of course, for all the parts. Behind the scene, what this actually created is, of course, a whole set of information that is now already ready to generate a set of build material, terminal diagram, uh, different reports that can be generated. But on top of all that, and you can see they just got added here. So build material just added it here. These are all my components that are in the schematics right now with exact build material. This 
data here is also the same data that I will use to build my panel or to assemble my panel in 3D format. So I'm going to open here my panel layout in 3D. I'm going to start by inserting a specific panel. So here, let's say I'm going to use one specific one, which is uh, this one or this one here, whichever. I place it. Boom. There we go. There is my panel. Maybe you don't need all these mounting informations. You just want to look at this and you want to directly jump into your mounting plate and start editing and adding stuff on the mounting plate on the front view. Now, I do have some macros here that I created over the time that I can actually go and get uh, 3D macros like these. And I can just drag and drop them in there. You can see that they are a little bit too big. Who cares? Well, I'm just going to dump them in there and you'll see I'm, I'm just going to take the ones that are just too many, just delete them, cl clean it up very quickly and uh, now just readjust the other ones so they actually fit. It, it's quite impressive how quickly I can do this because at this point uh, here, I can just change the length of, let's say, a device or another device, right? And as I change the length of this one or this one, just make this one a little bit shorter, uh, make this one here a little bit shorter. So matching it right on this corner here, make the same thing here. So maybe just, you know, make those ones shorter. And as you just drag this one, just drag it up here to this point and then just adjust it. Do you know any other tool out there that would allow you to do this? Probably not. This is awesome. I love it. And, and this data that I have here, boom, boom. Now this one, of course, I can get rid of, or I can even, you know, like this one here, I'm gonna change its length also, or even if I want to delete it or change it, or let's say we want to replace it, it's all possible. It's not like it. I have to explode or or implode anything. It, it just out of the box. I can do it. So here, maybe I can take a uh, this one here, just dump it in there, and boom, just go down to this spot here, just check it out to actually make it well very precisely at two inches from the bottom. So I'm going to do an offset of minus fifty millimeters. So here I'm going to use. 50 millimeters actually is, is going to be better the offset 50 millimeters from the bottom here like that now of course you can see that since i did this i may actually want to change those ones or make these ones fit too you know kind of thing so just adjust them do i still need the other one uh, most likely not so this one i can just get rid of so just delete it and there we go and we can now place all these objects that have been actually uh, used on the previous pages just by dragging and dropping them. So all you have to do is really pick the component, just drag and drop it. And it's actually going to show up here on this side if you pick the right project, of course. <laughs> I was just trying dragging and dropping from the wrong, co wrong component. ePlan won't do this. So it will actually ask me, okay, to place it there. Now, I'm not going to go too far in this. I'm just going to check out here on the pages what kind of extra um, reports do I get out of this. Well, you will see some very specific details uh, for the manufacturing team because for the manufacturing team, and I'm considering basically manufacturing in all its different phases, I have the first phase here, here which is the cutting. Uh, not the cutting, sorry, the kitting. Kitting kitting is basically go and get all the parts that you need to fulfill that panel. Here they are. Now, on the cutting sheet, you will actually see the detailed cut list for every single dock and rail that is up here. We can see there's a small mistake here. I forgot something. So I can just move back here and say, we're going to do this edit change length on this object here like this boom go back to your cutting sheet and you will see the cutting sheet as soon as it's updated as soon as you hit the update button boom and the length here is changed it's really cool so as you move forward the next step would be actually to do the drilling portion right so we have a drill template here that shows me exactly 
the drill template. In this case, I could actually go a little bit for bigger. So I could actually make a fit size and just make it bigger. Some people like the uh, this table here because you can see exactly how to punch your holes for threaded holes or drilled holes. Or I could also add some dimensionings if I wanted to, to just go inside here and add the dimensioning for all the holes that I've just created here automatically. Just by picking this here, boom, you have now the exact details on every one of these different holes or set of holes necessary for the docks and rails. Next one is the assembly of the component. Now I haven't placed too many components, so I have only this one component there and I can drill in here and see a little bit more. As soon as I update this, I have the perfect picture here. I have the identifying um, device tag, which is G226. And on the right hand side here, I can find out what this G226 is all about. I can see what the weight of that component is. And I can even see if we have some heat dissipation that requires some extra consideration for cooling and I could add this at the end of my panel. Now of course once this is all assembled then uh, we do the same thing for the door, we do uh, a terminal strip assembly just to help you and see okay what kind of terminals do we have and of course if we do have terminals we have to connect these terminals we show this in a terminal diagram format like this, where you can see really what gets connected to each terminal. We can even see jumpers. And we have finally the wire um, focus here, which is nothing else than a wireless uh, in this format or in this format. ePlan actually allows you to change the format as you want. It's just a report that gets generated. Now, on top of all that, if you have to configure anything, Let's say you want to go inside one of these specific pages. You want to display some specific attribute. We could actually go and assign any of these attributes here, or we could also even rename, if necessary, the specific attribute. Let's say here, this page attribute, we want to rename it the renamed user supplementary field. We could make it a free input. We could actually have a pick list. All kinds of different things can be done here. So let's say we do a selection list and then you have to define, of course, what goes in that selection list, you know, whether it's uh, A, B or C. And you can just add, you know, these different values in there. And there we go. Now, based on what you just did there, if you want to display these values, you would open the standard, let's say, plot frame, either copy the existing plot frame or just add to the existing plot frame, which predetermines what gets viewed here and there. And you just go in here, you can change your logo, you can change, you know, what you display, or you can even take some of these attributes, let's say the page counter, just drag and drop it over here. Uh, using the control key. And now because you renamed it, it should actually be displayed here under renamed user property here. Now, if there is a value that you assigned, this value will then display or not, depending on what it is. So in my case, I associated it to a page. So technically, if the page has that renamed value here of A or B, that A or B will show up here right in the spot that you defined. This quickly explains how we create projects in ePlan. Last but not least is how do we share this project with other users out there that may not have ePlan? eView is the answer. So you take this project here and when you are ready, you just basically upload it here into your projects by clicking here on that small plus and that just uploads it, which also means that you can now invite people to come and see a project and they would receive just a link to ePulse. Inside ePulse, they would have to register uh, and confirm that they do exist. So they would have to sign in. It could actually be a Microsoft uh, signature if you want to that is there. And here they have access to your project. You just upload it. And that also means that if they have access to your project because you granted them access and only the people that got the permission to see that project will actually be able to open it. 
that's a nice thing because they can copy it send it to someone else but they can see everything that i showed you earlier right here the different structure of the projects they can see your uh, different reports they can see your schematics and even better than this if they have to edit or comment any of these schematics because they wish to have some changes done they can actually add some red linings you can even see if colleagues added some red linings here and you can see all these different red linings that are there that went under a different uh, phase of reviewing approval all this can be done and on top of all the nicest thing here is that we have access to the project in 3d to the point that we have an augmented reality also where i can actually take this project send it to someone so he can actually test in the augmented reality here section uh, to view the project so epulse is really a very very nice uh, area to look into especially the eview and you can even see the data portal here so i hope this concludes the very quick presentation of eplan retail and how you can edit and even customize your eplan projects thank you this was roland from eplan canada